Hey everyone, Chomix here. I love drawing. Always have. It's something I've been doing since I was a little kid. Especially on the side margin of my notebook during class when I should have been taking notes. Yeah, I was kind of a bad student. But one of the things that I always enjoyed drawing from the beginning was none other than Sonic the Hedgehog. Come on, look at this guy. He's got an appealing and simple design and is just so expressive. I'm really under the impression that he's just the perfect character to draw, especially if you're new to art. I get a lot of people that ask me, Chomix, how do you draw the Sonic in your thumbnails? He looks so cool. Well, first of all, thanks. And second, yeah, he do be looking pretty cool though. And it's all because of that good, good Sonic Adventure art style. The adventure art style definitely took me a few tries to really figure out. But by now, I've done a ton of these drawings for each of my YouTube thumbnails, so I think I may know a thing or two about how to do it. I kind of got it down to a science at this point. Science. And today, I'd love to share this knowledge with you. Whether you're a new artist, or advanced artist, or not even an artist, but just curious to see how I make my art, join me today in this step-by-step -step tutorial on how to draw Sonic the Hedgehog in the Sonic Adventure art style. Before we kick this tutorial off, I'd like to say that this video is proudly sponsored by Skillshare. If you're serious about becoming an artist or really picking up any kind of skill, Skillshare is the number one place to take your curiosity and turn it into a well-refined ability. With Skillshare, you can explore among thousands of online classes to discover countless amounts of video lessons for all types of learners. New videos are being added all the time, and there are no ads to distract you from focusing on whatever new skill you're learning. Whether you're a pro, dabbler, or even a complete beginner, Skillshare offers so many amazing classes that can fit your needs. Like I said, I do a lot of drawing. I use a ton of different programs depending on what I'm doing, and getting a sense for how to use them or even understanding fundamental technique can be pretty challenging. Luckily, Skillshare offers lessons for all these types of things, like this one by Olympia Zagnoli that goes over boldly designing with color and shape, something very relevant to today's video. Join for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription to get unlimited access to classes. Not ready for that commitment just yet? No problem. Problem. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to use the link in the description will get a free trial to Skillshare Premium. So if you're interested to see what Skillshare is all about, definitely give it a chance here. Take your creativity to the next level with Skillshare today. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and with all of that being said, let's get right into this tutorial. To draw on the Sonic Adventure art style, you'll need a program that can use layers, can clip layers, and has a stabilizer or smoothing feature. If you're looking for something free to use with all these features, I'd recommend Fire Alpaca. It's what I used when first learning how to draw on this style, and it's never done me wrong. But after using it for so long, I began looking for a program that had a bit more to offer, which is when I found Clip Paint Studio. This program is absolutely amazing, and it's very affordable with only a one-time payment rather than a monthly subscription fee. Definitely recommend it, it's made my life in art so much easier. Photoshop and Paint Tool Sci are some other great drawing programs if you have them. There's just a ton of them out there, both free and paid, so you'll just have to look for what you can find. If you're on tablet, you can use pretty much anything that can do the above things and you'll be good to go. Sorry, I'm not too familiar with drawing on tablets, but I know there's a ton of good free and paid stuff out there. Also, I'm not sponsored by any of these programs or anything, I just thought I'd give some recommendations to people who have no idea where to start. By the way, feel free to pause and rewind this video in order to keep up. I'll be speeding up certain sections so this video doesn't become two hours long. I'm gonna be drawing Sonic running, because you know, that's what he does. Specifically, I want to make some fan art of the newly teased Sonic game coming out in 2022, so I'll actually be using this image from the trailer as reference. I'm also going to pull up a few official Sonic Adventure illustrations to occasionally reference just to make sure my drawings stay in line with the art style. Please use references when drawing, it's always a good idea and no, it is not cheating. Almost every great artist uses references, whether it's from other art or even real life. Just make sure to put them all on a separate layer than the sketch because we'll want to hide them all at the end. I usually make them about half transparent so they aren't too distracting. Make sure to name this layer References and then make a new layer and name it Sketch. Alright, with all of that out of the way, let's finally get on to sketching. Some general tips I have when sketching is to not be afraid of being really messy. We're going to be completely drawing over this sketch anyways, so it won't be seen at all in the finished drawing. 
Also, don't be afraid to resize, move around, and clean up your messy line art. I'll be doing this a lot throughout this entire process, as you'll be seeing. I often overlay a ton of lines on top of each other and then use the eraser tool to kind of carve out the shape that I want. When drawing Sonic, I always start off with very, very basic shapes and then pose him how I like. Lots of circles and curved lines. With the adventure style, he tends to have really exaggerated and noodly poses, but that can be kind of difficult to replicate, so feel free to draw him in pretty much any pose you'd like. Once I get the general pose down, I go back to refine the head. Try to draw as perfect of a circle as you can here. Once we get the circle nice and circular, we can start adding some details to the face. The first detail in the face I like to draw is his muzzle. I start with his cheek all the way on the side, curve down where his eye goes, and then curve back up where his nose is going to be going. His nose tends to cover the second dip down at his other eye, so I actually don't even worry about connecting it to the end of his face. It totally depends on the angle you're drawing Sonic from though. See? Perfect. For his nose, just make sure that the beginning is thin and then gets thicker towards the end. It's got kind of this curved bean shape to it. And finally, make sure to put this little oval inside of it like this. For his mouth, I'm doing his iconic Nike swoosh smirk. It's basically just the Nike swoosh with these three little vertical lines for his teeth. Next, I draw his eyes, or eye. He's got one uni eye basically in the shape of a very curvy M or maybe a sideways figure eight. When you get to the side of his head, you want to have this line go just a tiny bit out of the circle you drew for his head. Just a little bit. In the middle part that curves down in between his eyes, Sonic has this crease that I like drawing like so. So far so good, right? Let's quickly do his irises. They're basically just long and thin oval shapes with another oval inside them. And then one more tinier oval inside of that one. You'll darken the second oval like so, and the one all the way in the center is actually going to be the white highlight. Next, let's draw his brow. In the adventure style, his brow bulges out quite a bit, so don't be afraid to put it higher up. There's going to be some details with the shading that will have to fit in between his brow and eye, so leave some room. The one that's more in the middle of his face kind of just follow the curve of his eye. For the one on the side of his head, just do this little C looking shape. Let's move on to the ears. This one on the side of his head, I like to start it on top of the C shape we just drew, slightly curve it, and then come back down a little bit higher up on his head. For the other ear, I do pretty much the same shape and position it just above Sonic's brow, slightly to the side. But for this ear, you'll want to make a triangle shape inside of it and follow the curve of the shape we just drew. Again, make sure to leave a bit of room in between these two triangles because we'll be adding in some detail with the shading later, so you'll want to make sure you have enough room. At this point, I actually go down and start fleshing out the body before we do the spikes. Beginning with his chest, I make sort of an almond shape with a wider part on top, thinning down towards the bottom. Then you could draw his belly, which is just an oval inside of the shape that we just drew. I'm drawing it more to the side since Sonic is facing towards this direction more. Okay, here's a fun little tip. I like drawing the hands before the arms. You can put the hands pretty much anywhere within a reasonable arm's length distance, and then you can easily draw the arms afterwards. For the hands, I get it, they're pretty difficult to draw. So this is the perfect opportunity to use references like I mentioned earlier. I'm drawing both of Sonic's hands balled up into fists. So depending on what you're trying to do, try going online to find a reference for hands like how you want to draw them. You can literally just Google hand references and then bring it into your drawing program to reference. Like everything else in this art style, Sonic's fingers are very curved. So try to not have any harsh angles. For Sonic's glove cuffs and socks, there's usually these two round shapes on top of each other and I usually shape them like this first and create this little hook shape inside. Next draw the tail, which is just a curved little point like this. We'll quickly do the legs too while we're here. Again, make sure to make everything very noodly. We don't want any edges or corner shapes. For the socks, do them just like the glove cuffs. Make sure the shoes are nice and hot dog shaped. Full on Oscar Mayer wieners. That's a key characteristic of this art style. Honestly, the most important part. Get the stripe in the middle and then the sole of his shoe on the bottom. For the buckle, just make a rectangular shape, the same width as the stripe, and then make another smaller one inside. Also, make sure you only draw the buckle on the outer side of his shoe, not the inner part. 
The final thing we have to draw are the spikes or quills. I saved these for last because they're pretty big and usually go behind everything. The way his arm was positioned was a bit awkward when I started introducing the spike, so I actually ended up covering most of his arm. Yeah, I kind of feel dumb for drawing something that I ended up completely covering, but oh well, I think it looks fine. He's got three on his head and usually one on his back. Just make sure to make them pretty long and slightly curved down like this. There you have it, a nice little sketch of Sonic the Hedgehog in the adventure style. If you're satisfied with your drawing as is, feel free to stop here. We're going to start the actual line art now and it's going to be a little bit more advanced and requires you to be extremely clean. Don't worry though, I'm going to teach you how to do it. The line art is decently self-explanatory. First make a new layer and name it line art. Make sure to have a completely bold pen tool and set the color to pure black. Oh yeah, and make sure to turn on your stabilizer or smoother and turn that bad boy all the way up. You're gonna want the smoothest lines possible. It's at this point where I reduce the opacity or transparency of the sketch to around 30% or so. Just enough to where it isn't distracting and I can clearly see the line art on top of it. You're essentially just cleanly tracing over your sketch. Just make sure to be as clean as possible. I'm actually using a vector-based program and I overshoot a lot of my lines. Because it's a vector-based program, I'm able to use an eraser setting to quickly delete anything that's sticking out like this. But for those that aren't drawing in vectors, so anyone using Fire Alpaca or Photoshop, just make sure not to overshoot the line art like I do. If you don't know what vectors are, don't worry about it. Just connect all the ends of your line art neatly. For the irises, I actually use a circle tool to get a perfect shape. Just make sure to thicken the line at the bottom and top. Because actually, the trick to getting this looking more like the adventure art style is having good variety in your line width. So here's my rule of thumb. For lines that are more straight, make them thinner. For lines that are more curved, make them thicker. Again, because I'm drawing in vectors, I'm able to expand or shrink my lines with a tool. It's super convenient and saves a ton of time. But for everyone else not able to use vectors, basically just make sure to be very additive with your lines in order to make them thicker. So just go back over them a few times to really thicken them up. And to make them thinner, use the eraser tool and slowly shave away at the line. Once you're finished with your line art, just make a new layer right below the line art layer and call it line art smoothing. Now we're actually going to smooth out the intersections of any adjacent lines in this layer. What I mean by this is that you'll smooth out any harsh corners like this. This is a very tedious process, but make sure to take your time and smooth out any harsh edges created by two intersecting lines. Once you're all done, it's gonna look something like this, and we can finally move on to coloring. After you hide your sketch layer, that is. But before we can actually begin coloring, we need to create our color palette on a new layer called color palette like I do. I always put the color palette layer on the bottom by my references by the way so it doesn't get in the way of anything. This is to make it easy to grab your colors and keep them consistent, especially if you need to go back and forth between them. Grab any official image of Sonic and use a color swatch tool to grab the colors right off of the image itself. You'll want four variations of each color. The base color, the shadow, the highlight, and then a second highlight that's a bit brighter than the first that I like to call the super highlight. The highlight color should be just a bit lighter than the base color. Just light enough where you can tell the two apart when on top of each other. You'll probably have to manually adjust some of these colors after swatching them. This applies to all colors except for white, like in the gloves or eyes. Anything that's white, you'll just want to make a single gray tone as the variant. So do this for all of the colors that Sonic has, and make sure to neatly lay them out side by side. Also make sure to keep it at full opacity. Don't make it transparent or else when you go to swatch the color later, it'll be lighter. This next step is going to seem really weird at first, but trust me, it's going to make your life so much easier and save you a ton of time. Clipping is one of the most important techniques to neatly executing the Sonic Adventure art style. How it works in most programs is the layer with clipping turned on will clip to the layer below it. For example, I have these shapes in the first layer. If I make a new layer above and clip it, if I try scribbling, these marks will only appear in the area filled in in the first layer. Make a new layer called Color Clip, put it below the Line Art layer, take a bright green color, and use a paint bucket tool to color in everything inside of the line art green like this. Once you do this, make a folder above this color clip layer but below your line art layer, 
name it colors, and clip it to the color clip layer below. What we've done is basically made it impossible to color or draw outside of this green area. You'll never have to worry about coloring outside of the lines again. Make another new folder, put it inside of the colors folder, and then put a new layer inside of this new folder. Name the new folder blue and the new layer base. Color swatch your base blue color, and on any part of Sonic that should be blue, use the paint bucket tool to fill it in. Once you're finished, make another new folder, put it inside of the colors folder, and put a new layer inside of this new folder. Name the folder peach and the layer base. You see a pattern here? Do this for the rest of the colors, naming each folder the name of the color that you're using, and the layer inside of it base. Each color needs to be in a separate folder, and you'll see why later. Looking good so far, right? Again, if you're satisfied with your drawing so far, feel free to stop here. We're about to get into the shading, which by far is the most complex part. If you've been following along until this point though, I think you'll be good. I'm going to explain how to do it as easily as possible, so don't be scared. The hardest part about shading is keeping your layers organized, because this is the point where we're basically going to be creating a new layer for every new color we use. Every single one, so there's going to be a ton of layers. But if you've been keeping your stuff organized like I've been showing you, it won't be an issue. Oh, and make sure to keep your stabilizer tool on at max strength. What I like to do now is go color by color, starting with blue. Use the same pen tool that you've been using for your line art and grab the blue highlight color. To clarify, this is your normal highlight color, not the super highlight. In the blue folder, make a new layer and put it above the base layer. Name this layer highlight. What we'll be doing is following the contours of the line art. You'll want to really use your official Sonic Adventure art references to see exactly where these highlights are placed. Just do it very similar to how the official art does it, or you can copy like how I'm doing it. For any highlight that kind of just abruptly stops, you'll want to make sure to fade it out. You can do this by taking an airbrush tool, selecting the negative color, and then slowly fading the color out. This negative color takes color away instead of adding it. And because we're using an airbrush tool, it'll be gradual, creating a fade effect. If you don't have a negative color setting like I do, try finding an eraser tool setting that can just fade out instead. Once you have all of the bold highlight lines added in, we're going to be making a new layer above the highlight layer, clipping it, and naming it Super Highlight. Grab your blue Super Highlight color, use an airbrush tool, and slowly airbrush the inner part of your highlighted line. This will create a nice, sharp looking edge to your highlight, and once you do this for the rest of your highlights, it'll only become more prominent as we finally add in the shadows. To do the shadows, make a new layer above the base layer, but below the highlight layer. Clip it and name it Shadow. Color grab your blue shadow, use an airbrush tool, and make it about yay big. Draw on top of each of the highlight strokes. The tricky part here is you want to make sure that these shadows don't bleed out into unwanted areas. The perfect example of this is in the brow. If I just use the airbrush tool as is, it's going to go above the brow line art, which we don't want. In order to fix this, we'll want to take a selection tool and outline the area we want the shadow in. Now anything outside of this area that we selected will not be affected by the airbrush, so no need to worry about it bleeding out into unwanted areas. If any of your shadows abruptly cut out because of this, just use a negative color and airbrush tool to properly fade it out like so. So we're basically going to do this process for the highlights and shadows for every color. The only one that's an exception is white. Because the base color is pure white, drawing a white highlight is going to be impossible to see. It can't get any brighter than pure white. What I like to do is use a really obnoxious color, like bright green, so it's easy to see. Draw your highlights like this. Also, there's no need to use any super highlights for white. Then take your gray color and airbrush underneath the highlights to create your shadows like usual. Once you're done shading underneath the green, make a new layer above the green highlight layer, clip it, set your color to pure white, resize your line art brush as big as possible, and color over it. Anything that was green will now be covered with white like this. And if you want, merge this white layer down into the green one to make it just one layer. So just be neat and really take your time to finish the shading for the rest of the colors. Once you do the shading and highlights for each color, 
just go over your drawing and fix any little mistakes you can find. Once you check everything and it looks good, at this point I usually hide all of my references and also the color palette layer. For the background, feel free to leave it blank or do a complete background illustration. I'm usually pretty lazy when it comes to backgrounds and just kind of color them like this. I'll personally be adding these cool little particle effects from the Sonic 2022 trailer. It's your drawing though, so do whatever you think looks good. And voila! You've got yourself a sick looking piece in the Sonic Adventure art style. Use this method not only to draw Sonic, but any character like Tails or Knuckles, or even your own OC. The possibilities are endless. If you made it all the way to the end of this process, congratulations! Although I'd say Sonic is usually pretty easy to draw, drawing him in this style is no joke, which is exactly why I wanted to make this tutorial. I hope it was easy to understand and you were able to learn from it. I would absolutely love to see your drawings, whether it's still in progress or completely finished. Make sure to join the community discord and share your drawings in the art channel. And of course, if there was something from this tutorial you didn't understand or if you had any questions, feel free to ask me there. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more Sonic related videos. If this video does well, I'll definitely consider doing more like it. Maybe one for the Japanese classic Sonic style or the Sonic Rider style, for example. And finally, I'd love to thank all of my channel backers. You all are the number one motivators and the biggest reason I'm able to keep putting out content for you guys to watch. If you're also interested in becoming a channel member for only $2, along with getting some really cool perks like 4K wallpaper versions of my drawings, press the join button beneath this video or the channel membership link in the description. And with all that being said, I hope everyone has a fantastic day. Peace.